What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today I wanna to show you five bodyweight exercises that are on the more difficult side of calisthenic exercises that are not as hard as you think they are. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna give you the cheat codes, the tricks, the tips, the one thing you wanna focus on or two that are gonna make them a lot easier. And they're not throwaway exercises, guys. These are all things that are gonna have benefit to your training program as a whole, but if you can't do them, you're not gonna be able to gain those benefits. So that said, guys, let's get started right away with the dragon flag. All right guys, the dragon flag is a more difficult ab exercise, but it actually is more of a glute exercise. And that is the big problem here. If you're looking for the cheat code, stop focusing so much on what's on this side of your torso and focus more on what's on this side of your torso, because that's the key. Because if we look at the mechanics of the exercise, what we're losing here is the opportunity to get the glutes to help out because you're disengaging them. If your hips start dropping in here, right? As you start to get out straight, like that, yeah, your abs are working to hold up your legs, but what really needs to be working is your glutes need to be squeezed up. If you think about only one thing during this exercise, make sure that you're not allowing your hips as your legs get out to start sinking and dropping and creating this angle between your thighs and your torso. Instead, if you squeeze your butt up, you'll straighten that out so that you have one straight line between your thigh and your torso. And if you squeeze your butt up as hard as you can, holding the rest of your body up will be infinitely easier. So it should look like this. Come up. You can start high if you want for it to be easier. Come down. Come down here. Okay, so the secret is not necessarily the abs, but the ass. The second exercise here is an explosive push-up variation we call the Hannibal push-up. It's not as difficult as it may seem. The thought process is you're really trying to almost not think about exploding up to where you're touching everything in one shot, but where you're cutting the distance in half. All I have to do is bring my hands from a position here to a position about here where my pelvis was. All I have to do is bring my toes from a position here to a position up here to where my pelvis is, right? So I'm not trying to think about exploding to touch them together. I'm thinking about meeting in the middle. So when I get there, it's not as, it's not as difficult. The ground I have to cover is not as bad and I don't have to explode uh, as much as I thought I did to get there. So I come down, I come up, right in the middle. All right, exercise number three is the typewriter pull-up. You've seen this before, likely, and it, it is definitely a more challenging version of the pull-up because you have to have more control of your body, especially at the top, the most difficult range in the exercise. However, don't forget, you do have another hand on the bar. This is not a one-arm pull-up. The other hand should come into helping you to perform this exercise properly. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're widening out your grip here because if we're going to be sliding side to side and you start off too narrow, you're not going to be able to do that without having to change hand position and lift your hand off of the bar with all of your body weight suspended. What you want to do is be able to slide with your hands in position. So first of all, get wide. Secondly, as I come up, and I'll demonstrate this in full in a second, as I come up and I slide myself to this side, this hand is key. I actually want to utilize the strength of my wrist here to give me some support on top of that bar. Just because I'm not holding this way doesn't mean that I'm not holding on to the bar. I am holding on to the bar with my thumb and my wrist. All right, so you slide to this side here, you re-engage that hand, you slide that way, and just extend the hand. Point your hand and your fingers out away from you so that you're getting and turning the, the, the thumb down towards the ground here to hook on the bar, right? So it looks like this. I come up wide and then I go to the side. I can come back here to the side, to the side, to the side, or I can come up angled and go right into it. That's more of an archer, right? So the key, is getting wide, staying wide, and then when you're up, 
realizing that this is providing a lot of downward force on the bar to allow you to actually perform this. So next we have the high box jump. And you guys have probably seen people do some pretty impressive jumps here. This isn't even all that impressive for the guys that are really, really good at these. However, it would be challenging for a lot of different people. And I will tell you this, you do not need a great vertical jump to be able to execute a high box jump. What you need is the ability to get your knees up towards your head or over your head. However high you can get your knees up and over your torso, the easier this is going to become. Because what we want to do is work on that hip flexion capability. So if I was going to warm up for this exercise, what I would do is I'd come up to the box, I'd lift my knee up into it like this, try to get as high as I could, and then lean in to really stretch out the, uh, the muscles on the posterior chain here that are going to get stretched as I bring my knee up and just lean in, right? Because we want to get that knee up towards the head. Of course, I got to do both sides. And then I got to realize too that I need to get my hands, if my hands are going to be working for me, I need to think that my feet have to come up towards my hands so I can stand here in place and then drive my knees up and my feet up towards my hands. That way, to more dynamically warm up the movement. And then finally, we know that we could do a deep sink down into it to again get ourselves into position where our head, our upper body is approaching our feet. Now, the last key here is after getting ourselves warmed up that way, is to not forget to use our arms to do this. So, we're using the arms that are driving from here up as I lift. So, It'll look like this. Come down. One more time. And then down. So again, really trying to get my legs up. I wasn't jumping straight here through a vertical. I was bringing my legs up to try to get myself and my feet up on top of this box. And finally, exercise number five, the floating tuck planche as seen here. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, this is actually not nearly as difficult as it may appear. And that is because we're utilizing physics to perform the exercise if we do it right. What we want to do is mostly focus on two things. Number one is the position of our hands on the box when we do it. Because we have some options. I could have my fingers faced backwards this way. I could have them faced that way. Or I could actually have them faced out with a wider hand position. But there's only really one right way to do it because we want to make sure that our hands are as close to our center of mass and gravity as possible. And in the case of this exercise, in many, it's our pelvis, right? We want to make sure that our pelvis is balanced on our balance point here. So if I have my hands in this position or in this position, you can see that the natural bend of the elbow is outward. And with that outward bend of the elbow, we see that it's not nearly as good as what it could be if we put our hands facing backwards. Why? Because now when the elbows go back, they're actually going right down into the pelvis, getting really close to that center of mass, giving me a better balance on this box. Not to mention, we know that when our elbows are tucked into our side, I can get a lot more lat engagement here for stability. Because what we don't want to happen is to get up here balancing and have our upper body wavering or having our shoulder blades kind of uh, jostling up and down because we have no stability through the back. We want to have tightness through the back. So if you do those two things, it becomes a hell of a lot easier. So I get my hands facing backwards and tucked in, and then I get in position here. I'm going to lean forward, right, so that now I'm balanced over the top like that. And then once I'm there, I'm going to lift my knees up, continue to fall forward, and then there allow my legs to go back, balancing and counterbalancing the legs and feet with my head and upper body. So I'm in here like this, elbows in tight, in this position here, and press out, and come in, tuck, out, in, out, in, out, and down. So again, it's a balancing act. Yes, you need to have adequate upper body strength to be able to isometrically hold yourself there, but it's not nearly as demanding as it may seem if you have the mechanics of the exercise wrong.
So there you have it, guys. There are five bodyweight exercises, not nearly as hard as maybe you thought they were. And now I've given you some cheat codes to allow you to get out there and start trying them. Guys, if you're looking for a step-by-step bodyweight-only training program, no equipment at all required, that's our Athlean Zero program available over at athleanx.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else we want to cover. And I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. And if you haven't already, guys, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss a new video when I put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.